Hey guys, it's your girl Risa coming to you this evening with an update video. I posted videos earlier today about Corey's uh, visit to the doctor. Well, we got our test results back and everything is fine. They said that um, he's gaining weight now. Um, he's doing really good as far as his weight is concerned. Um, his height and everything is, is okay. Look who come and get in the camera. Come on, scoot back. Look at him. Say hey, everybody. You gonna say hello? You gonna stare at yourself? Good morning, everybody. Say good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Say it's me. It's me, Corey. That's right. <laughs> How did it go at the doctor? He's my mouth. They checked your mouth. Tell them you're healed. You're healed. Say, I am healed. <laughs> that used to be his song, you guys. He used to literally sing that. Uh, hey. Go ahead. I am healed. <laughs> what else? I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. Sing, dude. Uh I am healed by the stripes. I am healed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get down. Pick up mama. Um Yeah, so um everything went fine. Um instead of him he goes every three months. Instead of every three months, they have him coming back in two months. Because they had postponed the CAT scans for a while. Um, now they're going to pick them back up. So, at first he was getting CAT scans. What, Daddy? He got your phone. Look. Um, you're going to have to get out of here with that noise. Mm -mm. Nope. At first they were doing CAT scan, ultrasound, and x-ray. Uh, now, for the last, I say three months they've only done x-ray and oh excuse me x-ray and ultrasound so now they're gonna pick it up he goes back in two months and they're gonna start instead of doing ultrasound of his abdomen i mean a, a cat scan of his abdomen they're gonna do cat scans of his chest go out of here with that because it's gonna be too loud and the reason being um we found out when they realized how big his tumor was that part of his major blood vessel, his vena cava, was um, the tumor was attached to it. So they almost had to do like open heart surgery. Um, but they were able to reach it, the area, without having to make an incision in his chest. So they were able to get that part of, a, of the tumor. They had to cut it out. So, um, they have to do, you know, make sure that, you know, everything is fine with that. So, they were doing CAT scans of his stomach to keep an eye on that area where the tumor was. And now they're going to focus on his heart. They have a test. He said that they're going to start doing... Um, on his heart when we go back in two months so um, besides you know all of the other stuff the blood work and keeping up and making sure that um, I talk to them about his behavior in school and and how you know some things happen in school that I was concerned about and so they want to um, told me if I am interested, I can take him to see the hospital psychologist for the pediatric psychologist that deals with oncology patients. She sees all of the oncology patients because the chemo and radiation treatments that he take, they have seen that it sometimes causes behavioral problems in children. And um, they want to make sure that you know, nothing is going on that I cannot do anything about. 
or if it's something going on they want to make sure that they catch it in time before it gets out of hand and the reason i said that because um cory is he went from being a two-year-old or two and a half year old um in 2013 he turned three in march oh excuse me and at that point before he turned three um Corey always had allergy problems so he couldn't really be an outside kid meaning he could go outside for a little while but he had to be heavily medicated so he went from that to being turning three and that was in march and then in august we find this out so in august he started chemo and radiation once he started that, we could not let him go outside. And we could not let him interact with a lot of kids. And we had to be, even with us, we had to be extremely cautious with him. So, after he turned three, up until, um, what was it? Not long ago, maybe about, I say, March of this year. Corey's been just pretty much a house kid. So after he was, um, they did his last test and found out, say, March 11th, he was cancer-free for an entire year. So then they started to um, notice that his speech and everything was not quite, him being able to receive certain things and being able to articulate what he wants. They called it an auditory sensory delay. So they found out that he had a delay. So then they set him up for speech. So he was going to speech. And then they said, well, what do you think? Would you like to get him in school? And I was like, sure, you know, maybe to help him. And so they did. They did everything as far as the school system, did assessments, got back with us. They did the assessment. And within, what was it like the next week, Galen? Mm -hmm. The next week they said he'll be starting school tomorrow. And I was like, what? You know, they sent us the letter saying, okay, well, this is what we found. And then Corey will start school tomorrow. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And so it just happened just that quick. And so we did. We wound up putting him in school. He was in school about two, two months. And so he went from being a house kid to being put in school and not knowing what school is and not having to, you know, follow directions the way that they do because he's at home he was able to do whatever he wanted you know pretty much and and which wasn't much he just was able to sing and watch movies and you know play his games and things like that and puzzles and all of that he was able to do that at his leisure and not have be on a time frame so he kind of you know didn't follow directions he would he would have his good days but some days when he was bored Corey would begin to sing and he's like that if you don't stimulate him he will get bored really easy and you know when kids get bored they do what they want to do and so they want to make sure that there's nothing that um the chemo or radiation may have caused a problem with um even with um his developmental delay it's like he was stuck at an early three-year-old so it's like he got frozen in time throughout his chemo and radiation. He didn't progress in certain areas. Um, Corey can read. Yeah, he can read. And I don't mean just it, that, the. I mean, he can read. Um, he knows how to trace. He knows how to write his letters. Um, he just know a lot of things that they really did not know that he knew. Because if he don't know you, he's not going to talk to you. That's just point blank and the period. And even if he know you, he might not be feeling you today. He still won't talk to you. So that's just how he is. And so, you know, I talked to the doctor about that today. And then they su suggested, well, let's wait until this new school year start. And we'll go from there because maybe the new school year with him getting that little beginner part of the school year when he started, it might be different when he starts school this time so we will see and um we're gonna get him set up with speech again he wasn't able to do speech this summer because his speech therapist was all booked up 
Somebody cooking. What are y'all cooking up there? What are y'all cooking? Huh? Lord, they cooking the boy pot pie. <laughs> That's Jada the Mir. Say, Corey wanted a pot pie. They cooking him a pot pie in the microwave. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we're going to see what this next school year holds. You guys, when I tell you, okay, we went to the children's hospital, okay, and we were on the oncology floor, oncology and hematology. For those of you that don't know what oncology is, it's, um, I guess, like diseases of the blood or dealing with, you know, different types of cancer, like um, whatever type of cancer there is, because there's a lot of types of cancer that we just don't know anything about. Um, people with sickle cell and all of this kind of stuff, they all go up to anybody that has a, a compromised immune system or, you know, different types of serious illnesses like that are on this floor. Also on this floor is the um, allergist that Corey goes to see. You go to the right to the allergist, you go to the left to hematology. And hematology, they have this big glass room that is built on this part of the wing that they go in is their waiting room because they have to be sectioned off with their own ventilation system and all of that. And we were in there today. <laughs> Scared me stiff. Do y'all hear me? We were sitting in the room with the doctor and Corey's nurse. Each oncology child has their own personal nurse. They won't see another nurse unless their nurse is out. So if I have any problems with Corey at all, I call and speak to his nurse and his nurse be with his doctor. So that's how that goes. So we're sitting in there and we were talking. All of a sudden we hear somebody scream help. And I'm like, did I hear somebody say help? And then she said it again and they, they jumped up and ran out the room. And y'all, all I could do was do my arm like that and touch my husband. And I just put my head down and just started to pray. I don't even know what I said, but I know we just started, both of us just started to pray. It was an a eerie feeling. It was a, a sense of panic. It was a sense of urgency. It just, I was like, wow. Because on that flow, anything, could, you know, you don't know what all these kids go through up here. You just don't. And I know from being up there, watching them, when Corey was having, he had three different, three different types of chemo medicine he had to take. When we first started off, two of them they were giving him, and he would have his his port was in his chest. They would be, it would be in a syringe, and they would give it to him that way. And then the third one always had to be given by IV drip. Going in that room, and before he could get the one with the IV drip, he had to have all kind of tests done to make sure that his heart. Everything was okay before he took that medicine. Do y'all realize that medicine was off glass? Do you hear me? And I have videos of us sitting in the rocket chair in the room. He's hooked to the IV machine and it has to be done precisely at a certain type of drip. It can't go faster and it, you know, it just precision and it takes patience. And we it would take us, what, about an hour or two? About an hour or two for him to get it. And it was red. <laughs> it was red. And I, at first, when I first saw the bag, I thought it was blood. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's, it was like, no, that's not blood. That's just the chemical. And it has to be mixed every time. That's not something that you just, they just pull out the draw. No. So, you know, looking at that and um, even the kids that are having blood transfusions, all of us are in the same room and just watching how these kids come in and I'm looking at my baby when at the time and he didn't have any hair he had lost all of his hair and his eyebrows were gone his eyelashes were gone and he had I can't remember what they call it is it um tosis or something like that to where his eyelids would just be like this he couldn't open his eyes you know they just was all he looked like Mr. Magoo he could see you but they he just could not raise his lids and looking at the kids, and some of them were now wheelchair bound um, because some of the medicines can cause nerve damage. Don't get in my bed with that cereal. 
get down. And, you know, all kind of things that they were telling us that we had to be on lookout for. And so going up there, watching these kids of all ages, all races, it just, boy, girl, whatever. It was just, I can't say amazing, but your heart just goes out. It really does. And you just wonder, what can I do? You know? I mean, wow, little bitty babies. It was, remember that day we were sitting there and the lady came in with her baby. Baby was like, I don't even think the baby was six weeks old. Little bitty baby came in. And I was like, oh, my word. You just, oh, gosh. You know, it just it's just heart breaking, you know. And But it's life, and we just don't understand how we live our lives every day we come and go we have things that pee us off you know we gripe and we complain about little bitty things compared to what these children and i know adults go through this too but look at little bitty kids that are just freshly here on earth do y'all hear me that can't do nothing for themselves. that depend on us for protection and everything else and now they're going through this and it's nothing we can do but love on them and hold them and you know, I know people look at my videos and they see Corey still sucking a bottle at five years old. And you know what? That's my son's comfort. I don't know what he, I know what he went through, but I don't know how he felt. And even now, um, I can remember, thank you, Lord, when I was talking to Rachel, 37 Sweet Pea on the phone one day, and she talked to me about what she went through with her chemo and uh, she was asking me how was Corey doing with it. And I was explaining some things that, you know, he asked me to do. And one, he would say, Mommy, can you rub my feet? And he would give me his foot to rub. Or he would say, Mommy, hold my hand. And I would hold his hand. And she'd say, I know what Corey is going through. She'd say, because even though she only had one leg, she'd say, my sister, my feet would have a pain in it. That I just could not explain. And she said my sister would sit and rub my feet. She said I don't know what it does. For her to just rub that foot. But it made a big difference in my whole body. And that was the first eye opening thing that I got. And I was like. You know Lord. You just don't know. And I told the, doc I told the doctor about. How he would complain about his body hurting. And they were like. There's nothing they can do about it. It's a part of, you know, some of the side effects of you. They they are giving those children poison to kill another type of poison in their body, you know. And the only treatment that they had was let him soak in warm water as long as he want to sit there, and it may help and it may not. And he had those days where he would come and get in the bed and just say, "Mommy, rub my feet." And I would just rub his feet. Sometimes we could be sitting at the table with him. And you literally see his feet turn purple. And that was the, what they call it, neuropathy. Neuropathy, the nerve damage. They didn't want it to get to the point to where he couldn't walk. Or he couldn't stand up. Or he couldn't balance himself or anything like that. But we sat and watched his feet turn colors. And I was like, wow, you know. They give, gave me a binder, y'all, this thick of stuff that I had to read. I mean, this is stuff that you got to pay attention to, things that you got to know. If he got a temperature of, a what was it, 100.1, you had to call the doctor immediately and say, hey, he's got a temperature of 100.1. You had to, I would have to put his um, numbing cream on his port, cover it with a bandage, and he, I had within one hour from from that time I talked to the doctor to get him to the emergency room and it's just that serious you just we just don't understand and that's with anybody not just children but when you're dealing with cancer it's just a, a whole gamut of things that we just don't understand things that we just don't get to see that we don't deal with unless it's somebody close to you and you're there to see it and to go through it and if that helps my baby by sucking on that bottle to calm him down or relieve him of whatever, I don't know what all he remembers. And I know now when we take him to the doctor, things that we think that he would not have remembered, he remembers. And 
things that, or we go in different parts of the hospital that he might have received some pain. He reacts to it, you know? So I'm like, I don't know. Even like the, they had a picture of his um, CAT scan machine on the wall. And when we first would go there, he would cry to look at it. It would make him afraid. But I have a picture. We took him to the emergency room one night. Um, he was sick and we were coming out where he would go and have his scans at sometimes. Um, we were coming out and there was the sign, a big giant picture of the children's cat, cat scan machine. And he said, look, mommy, my machine. And he literally, guys, it was so precious. He laid down on the floor flat in front of the machine like he would be with his hands down by his side. Like they would tell him to in the cat scan machine. And my oldest son literally joined his brother and laid on the hospital floor, laid down there with him as long as he wanted to lay there. And that's the kind of support that we all need, whether we're going through cancer or whatever. We all need somebody to understand and be there no matter what, no matter what. And I just, I said all of that because my heart is a little full because I look at my baby and I think about those that don't, that didn't make it, those that are still going through. And yes, I do get nervous, you know, because you wonder if something else going to come about. But I trust God. And he said, keep your eyes on me. He sent me a word one day. He said, that thing that was attached to your baby is gone and never to return. And I bind those spirits. I thank you, God. I thank you. I thank you. And I thank you. That's is. I have no problem praying for anybody. I know prayer changes things. When two or more gather on somebody's behalf, God is in the midst. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. And I don't care what it is. That's the first thing I want to do is pray. I want to pray. Yes. Okay, well, we, okay, let's hold up. We don't even need to go no further. We're going to join hands and we're going to pray about this thing right now we're going to go ahead and release the angels on this. We're going to release the healing and the strength and the provision on whatever it is. I hear a lot of people say, you know, go over to Reese's channel. She will pray with you. My thing is, I'm so grateful for that. But you know what makes me feel good to know that something that I have said may have touched you in some type of way. Everybody wants to be remembered. Nobody wants to be ignored, but everybody wants to be remembered. And I know that when my day comes, I want to be able to touch as many people, take that back up front, as I can. I don't claim to be God. I don't want to be God. I, I'm, I can't do his job, okay? But I can be a friend. I can be a listening ear. Whatever I can do on God, on my end. I know with God, all things are possible. And I know I, I, I'm learning more and more about his word and what it says and what to do and how to. It's not always easy when I'm used to living by my flesh. So I want to say to all of you out there that have gone through some things, it ain't over until God says it's over. No matter what it looks like, we're going to cry. We're going to have our bad days and we're going to feel some type of way. But know that in the, in, in the midst of what we feel, we still can persevere and push through and trust God and speak over our life. If you can't turn on the gospel music and let it minister to you, if you can't say a word of encouragement, if you can't repeat not one scripture, throw your hands towards heaven from where your help comes from. He will do it for you. We don't know when, what day, what hour. We don't know. But I have been to the point where I have needed God to enter the room. I was hurting so bad and he entered the room and he just healed me. Thank you, Jesus. He is real. If you don't believe nothing I say from this day forward, believe that he is real. And he loves you. He is with you. And he is not a figment of nobody's imagination. Jesus Christ is real. God is real. I'm telling you, he is real. He is real. And it amazed me so much when Corey was going through the different people that God placed in my life to send me a word, a word of confirmation that he was working. You know, he say, uh-uh, keep your eyes on me. 
That looks real messy. Keep your eyes on me. Don't trust nobody but me. Mm, thank you, Jesus. It don't matter what it looked like. We went to the surgeon to set up the day for his surgery. They got that last cat scan back and that tumor had gotten bigger. And yes, I began to cry because when that doctor, she told me she, how many years she been doing it? 30 something years. And she had never seen nothing like that in my life. In her life, she had, she had never seen that happen to where the tumor got bigger after 13 weeks of chemo. They had never, she had never seen it before. She could not explain it. Y'all, when, when they, when they don't know, when they can't explain it, hey, that's when you show enough, go ahead and speak over your life. Lord, thank you. God, I know you got it. That's not for them to explain to me. That's not for them to even understand. But I know that you are king of king and lord of lords and you sit high and you look low and you know everything and you got it. You are the healer. You are my source and I give it to you. For her to say that, it just kind of like devastated me and my husband. I was like, well, what? You know what I mean? And it happens, y'all. No matter what treatments they may put forward, it don't happen unless God say so. We may not all get healed. Even though we pray for healing, God still carries us from one day to the next. We may not get healing in this life, but we will in the next. And he uses us sometimes to show his favor. He uses us sometimes to show who he is and what he can do. We may suffer for him. That means in our body, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever the case may be. But he is always there. And we can get discouraged. Why didn't I get healed? Why didn't this? But then we don't know. Sometimes we'd be so caught up in what we asked for and didn't receive. Are we paying attention to what we have received? Because have y'all even thought about when you have a headache, toothache, any type of illness? Do you even realize how bad that can be if God had not intervened? Anything like that could just take us out. But when God provides, no devil in hell can stop it. So even when life is over, it's because God said so. Even when life begins, whether we're married or not, not a child can be produced in this world unless God says so. Yes, he had in his, in, you know, he preferred that we be married, but he already knew. He knew before we even came about that some of us were going to have children out of wedlock. And he chose that moment to bring his people into this world. So even in the midst of your mess, God chose, he chose a blessing. He chose to use that mess for a miracle. And that's bringing a child into this world. No matter what it looks like, he is still in control. He's going to have his way whether we acknowledge him or not. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. He has told us these days are going to get hard. There's going to be some crying. Yes, it is because we're not going to understand what's going on in this world. But if you trust him, you don't need to understand. Just trust him and believe in him. He'll make your enemy your footstool. We want God to come and do things the way we want them to. We want to be able to hurt somebody the way they hurt us. But the one thing that we got to learn how to do is continue to love people in spite of how they treat us. God said, don't worry about how they treat you. You worry about how you treat somebody else. Because he speaks to each and every one of us individually. Okay? And I have told you, I have given you my word. And this is what I'm telling you to do. I will deal with that other person. But you listen to me and you do as I say. That's just how we tell our children. You do as I say. Don't you listen at nobody else. Somebody else going to tell you something wrong. But you do as I say. It may not feel good. Your flesh may not get the satisfaction of the way I'm telling you to do this. But you get the overall blessing by doing it the way I say. 
and we look at Jesus Christ and we don't understand that he is our God. He turned the other cheek. He did things that he didn't, that we feel like, okay, I ain't doing that. But are we going to suffer for him? In the midst of our mess, can we encourage somebody else? In the midst of our not being able to pay our bills, are we going to try to help somebody else? If in a way possible, you might not have money in your pocket, but you can be a friend. You can lend an ear. You can sit and talk to somebody that may not have had a friend to talk to in years. That can change a person's life. It's just all about love, showing love. Love is an action word. It's something that you do. You show that. You move on that. But caring is the one that really, really, really matters to me. If you don't care about something, it's not gonna care. It's not gonna do nothing for you. You are like whatever, you know. You, mm -mm. It's out of sight, out of mind. If you don't care, go put that juice back. Oh, yeah. But check yourself today and make sure that you care. Check your care meter. You know, because you can always tell somebody you love them. But do you care about that person? Do you care about what happens to them? Do you care about whether they eat, sleep? cry have a friend whatever do you care you know we all love money money is the root of all evil that as they say but it's what we do with money that matters can you donate to the childhood cancer fund because these programs really really do help y'all they you just don't understand because the more you donate, the less parents who, who have children um, that are going through this have to pay out of their pocket. I'm, I'm a witness firsthand. I really am. There's no way me or my husband could have ever imagined how expensive a child with cancer or anybody with cancer, how expensive these things can be. We didn't even get because some people, you know, are still struggling trying to find out how am I going to pay this because you can't work. It's, you know, you got to travel. And sometimes they send you out of town for treatments. You know, if you got a certain type of cancer and, you know, they might not have um, what you need here, you got to travel to go and get your... That is expensive. It's so much entailed in it. And I am truly grateful I'm truly grateful. Can God trust you with trouble? Can he trust you with trouble? Can he? Will you let him use you? So to all of my subscribers, I call you guys my family members cuz I don't I don't want to feel like I don't I don't like the thought of you know um how some people use it as though they're above the people that are watching them. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. We all the same. I eat, sleep, and poop just like y'all do. Okay? I make mistakes. I say things wrong. I do things wrong all the time. And you guys bless me so by coming and watching my videos. This is almost a 40-minute long video. And I pray that y'all watch it in an, all the way through in its entirety. God's got a blessing for somebody. Yes, he do. Because he blessed me every day. I mentioned in my video that I may not be uh, wealthy with money, but I am wealthy with blessings. Little blessings that I don't even know that God has given me. I'm thankful for everything that he has done in my life. Everything for keeping me, even when I was trying to destroy myself. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. It's your girl, Risa Ree, and I just wanted to come. Gabby, you got to get the door. Mommy, she opened the door. Who going to open the door? Did you ask who is it? They got the key. They got, they got the key. They got, they oh, she got a key out here. Um, hey.